Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. This video takes a look at the chain rule for multivariable calculus, what you'd usually see in a Calculus 3 course. If you're looking for info on the chain rule for single variable functions, you can find a link to that in the description below. If we think back though to a function of one variable, so y as a function of x, and taking the derivative with respect to x, we wrote that as dy dx. This is the idea of looking at a very small change in y and comparing it to a similarly small change in x. And in calculus 1 or 2, you might have done some things where you treated these differentials dy and dx as separate objects that we could do different things with, and you might have even done some rearranging of these objects to produce something that looks a little bit like this dy statement here. We use this idea in different places like u substitution for integration, doing linear approximations of functions, and even solving separable differential equations. So this is a formula for the differential dy if y is a function of just x. If we have a function of both x and y now, then our differential is actually in terms of really small changes in both x and y. So if z is equal to our function, then the total differential for z is equal to this statement here, partial derivative with respect to x, dx, plus the partial derivative with respect to y, dy. The idea with the multivariable chain rule is in the case where these variables are also in terms of some other variable. One of the most common cases would be if those variables are functions of t, let's say. And we ask then, what would the derivative of z be with respect to this other variable t? If we go back to this idea of differentials, then taking this statement at the top of the screen here, dividing by a differential dt, gives us a formula for dz dt. First, we would differentiate with respect to x, treating y as a constant, and multiply by the derivative of that function x with respect to t. Then we would add to it what we get when we differentiate with respect to y, treating x as a constant, and multiply that by the derivative of y as a function of t. Now if we change our subscript notation, we get our multivariable chain rule, where z is a function of two variables x and y, and those x and y variables are also functions of one variable t. Now you can see by looking, there's a lot to keep straight here in terms of notation, right? We have statements that involve ordinary derivatives and others that are partial derivatives. Let's take a look at a common way we can know not only what formula to use, but also which types of derivatives we're supposed to be using and where in the formula. We'll talk you through the idea of a tree diagram for the chain rule when some of your functions are functions of more than one variable. If we look at the case where we just showed you z is a function of two variables x and y, and x and y are both functions of just one variable t, and we want to find the derivative of z with respect to t. First of all, how do I know that the derivative with respect to t is an ordinary derivative? If we set up our tree so that z is at the top, and every function branches off to the variables that it's a function of, so you can see z branching to x and y here, and then x and y are both branching to their only variable t, if we take a look at the bottom row of our tree diagram, you'll notice that the bottom row only has a single variable t in it. Since the bottom row only has one variable, that tells us that the derivative we seek is actually an ordinary derivative. So we write regular dz dt here. The final thing we want to keep in mind is that anytime there's a fork in our tree where we can go more than one direction, in other words, that variable is a function of more than one other variable, then that will be a partial derivative. So at the top here, since I can go from z to either x or y in the diagram, both of the derivatives of z in terms of x and y will be partial derivatives. When we're going from x or y to t on the diagram, there's only one path to take, so that means those derivatives of x and y with respect to t will be ordinary derivatives. Now each term is given by one of the paths from z to t on the diagram. So first traveling to the left on the diagram gives us partial derivative of z with respect to x times the ordinary derivative of x with respect to t. Traveling the right path from z to t now will have the partial derivative with respect to y of z times the ordinary derivative of y with respect to t. 
Here's a good first example for us. We're given a function z equals x cubed plus y cubed, so it's a function of more than one variable. We have x is equal to 2 sine t, so it's a function of one variable t. And y is also a function of one variable t. y is equal to 3 cosine of t. We're going to calculate dz dt. So we'll go ahead and write down what we said before, our ordinary derivative in terms of z with respect to t is first going to be the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the ordinary derivative of x with respect to t. And again, z has more than one variable, so its derivative is going to be partial. x has one variable in it, so its derivative is going to be ordinary. Plus, now we'll have partial derivative of z with respect to y times the ordinary derivative of y with respect to t. So let's go ahead and calculate those. So our partial derivative with respect to x of our z function here, our first term, the derivative with respect to x, is going to be 3x squared. And the derivative of the second term, we have no x's in there, so with respect to x, that derivative is going to be 0, times dx dt, so just normal stuff here, the derivative of 2 sine t with respect to t would be 2 cosine of t, plus now the partial derivative of z with respect to y, so we go back to z, treating y as the variable this time and x as constant. So this first term here is considered a constant with respect to y, so its derivative is 0, plus the derivative of y cubed with respect to y would be 3y squared. Now times our dy dt, we have 3 cosine of t, and the derivative of that is going to be negative 3 sine of t. We go ahead and do some distributing here, so we'll actually get 6x squared cosine of t. Here we have minus, so that actually be minus 9y squared sine of t. And what we want to notice now here is we actually have three variables in here. If you think of our diagram, we have z branching off to x and y, and then x and y both leading to t in our diagrams. If we want the derivative with respect to t here, we really want to give our answer in terms of whatever's in this row where t is on the diagram. So we're going to want to convert our x's and y's usually to t's in this case. So we'll go in here and say 6 times x squared, so that would be 2 sine of t squared cosine of t minus 9, and then y squared would be 3 cosine of t squared times sine of t. And we'll go ahead and do some multiplying here. So when we square, we'll get 4 in here times the 6 will give us 24. We'll get a sine squared t and a cosine t. Minus, here we have 9. 3 squared is going to give us another 9. We actually get 81 here. We'll have then cosine squared t times sine of t for this one. Let's look at a different case now where not only is z a function of two variables, but our x and y functions are also both functions of two variables as well. When we set up our tree diagram for this, you can tell already, I think, we're going to have more branches near the bottom. So we have a fork in our tree where z branches to x and y still, of course, but now our x and y also fork to the variables s and t as well. So let's again say that we want to find dz dt. So the first question is, what kind of derivative is it? Is it ordinary? Is it partial? Well, looking at the tree diagram at the bottom row, since we have more than one variable in the bottom row, we know that our dz dt will be a partial derivative. So we'll use the curly dz dt here. Something also a little bit different now. We only want all the paths on the tree that lead to t if we are calculating dz dt. So if we head down the left side of the tree, we would have dz dx, and this would be a partial derivative since we had a choice of direction at z here. And then dx dt is also going to be a partial derivative since we had a choice of direction at x. Going down the other path that leads to t from the top, we would have dz dy being a partial derivative again because of the choice of direction we had at z. And this same type of choice tells us that the dy dt is also a partial derivative. If instead we want to find dz ds, again notice that every stage of the tree has a choice of paths, so these are all going to be partial derivatives. 
To get from z to s in the diagram, we could go left, which would give us partial dz dx times partial dx ds. And then going down the right side to s, we would get partial dz dy times partial dy ds. For our final example, we'll work one of these where z is a function of x and y, and x and y are both functions of s and t. We're going to calculate both of these partial derivatives here, partial derivative of z with respect to s, and also with respect to t. We'll start with our partial derivative of z with respect to s. The formula for that will be partial derivative of z with respect to x first, then from x to s on our diagram, and then we'll add to that the partial derivative of z with respect to y times partial derivative of y with respect to s. If we do that with respect to x is first, so treating y as a constant, we'll keep the y, the derivative of the x squared part becomes 2x times the derivative of x with respect to s. If we look at x, our first term here is just s, and the derivative of that would be 1, plus the derivative of 2t with respect to s. Remember, that would be treating t as a constant, so we actually get 0 there, plus dz dy, so partial derivative of z with respect to y. This x squared now is a constant multiple if we're thinking in terms of y. So we keep our constant multiple x squared times the derivative of y, which is just 1, times the partial derivative of y with respect to s. So if we think about the derivative of the first term, 2s with respect to s, that will be 2. And then again, our second term in y is only in terms of t. So with respect to s, this is thought of as a constant. That would be 0 there. So we'll go ahead and we'll get 2xy, the entire first half here, plus we get 2x squared. Now, if we're asked for the derivative with respect to s, we want to go ahead and give our answer in terms of everything that's on the row in terms of s. And s and t are on the final row of our diagram if we write out our tree diagram. So we want to actually restate this in terms of s and t instead of x and y, I think. So if we go ahead and give ourselves some room here, we'd have 2 times just filling these in, x, which is s plus 2t, times y, which is 2s minus t plus 2x squared, so we would have 2 times our s plus 2t all squared. And I think we want to clean this up a little bit, so let's say 2 times, if we distribute here, we'll get 2s squared minus st, we'll get plus 4st, and then minus 2t squared, plus 2 times, if we do s plus 2t times itself, that'll give us s squared. We'll get 2st plus another 2st, distributing in two copies. And then we get 2t times 2t, that would be 4t squared for that. So let's go ahead and distribute here. We'll get 4s squared. These two together would actually be 3st multiplied by 2, so we'll get 6st there times 2 here would give us minus 4t squared. We'll distribute our 2 here as well, so we'll get plus 2s squared here. 2st and 2st is 4st times the 2 will give us 8st. Plus 2 times 4t squared will give us 8t squared there. And if we give ourselves some room, so s squared terms there, we'll have 6s squared st terms, we have 6 plus 8 more would give us 14 of those. And then negative 4t squared plus 8t squared would actually give us 4t squared there. We could leave our answer like this. We could possibly, if you like, factor out a common factor of 2, if it matters to you. We get 3s squared plus 7st plus 2t squared if we do that. If we want to be super picky and have everything factored, I guess, believe it or not, this actually factors. We would get 2 times 3s plus t times s plus 2t. So again, however far you want to take this 
is up to you or your instructor, I suppose. A lot of people would just go ahead and stop there, and that's probably fine. We'll go back now and do our partial derivative with respect to t. So partial derivative of z with respect to t is going to be equal partial derivative of z with respect to x. So first going through x to get to t plus what we get when we go through y. So partial derivative with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to t. So now the nice thing here, we already figured out this derivative and this derivative when we did the partial derivative with respect to s. So when we did the partial derivative of z with respect to x before, we got 2xy. So what we really just need to do now is figure out the partial derivative of x with respect to t. That's not too bad, right? The derivative of the s term is going to be, that's a constant, so it'll be 0. The derivative of 2t with respect to t is going to be 2. And now we'll write down our partial derivative of z with respect to y was x squared before. So we just need to figure out our partial derivative of y with respect to t. Looking here, we have 2s minus t. The derivative of 2s is 0. Treating t as a variable, the derivative of this term will be negative 1. So we actually get 4xy minus x squared. Let's go ahead and convert that into s's and t's, which would be in our lowest row in the diagram. So we'll go ahead and say 4 times our s plus 2t times our y, which is 2s minus t, minus x squared, so that would be s plus 2t quantity squared there. If we do our distributing now, we'll get 4 times s times 2s is 2s squared. We'll get a negative st, and we'll get a plus 4st there. And then here, minus 2t squared. This is what we had before. We just have a 4 in front instead of a 2. Minus s plus 2t squared. So again, we'll have s squared plus 2st plus 2st plus 4t squared. This will be minus this time. And if we combine some like terms here, we'll get 8s squared. This and this here will be 3st together times 4 will give us 12st. We'll have our 4 times our negative 2t squared, that's negative 8t squared. And then we'll have to remember to subtract everything that we get here. Notice that this will be a 4st like terms there. So we get a minus s squared, a minus 4st, and a minus 4 t squared. Giving ourselves some room here, if we combine all our like terms, we'll have 7s squared. We have 12st minus 4st, so that's plus 8st. Minus 8 and 4 would give us 12t squared. And we can certainly go ahead and leave our answer like this. If you're really picky and you want to do the factoring, you can go ahead and call this 7s, I'll let you figure this out. 7s minus 6t times s plus 2t. And really either of those answers I think are just fine. All right, everyone, hopefully this helps you with your multivariable chain rule. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.